As the White House Director of Legislative Affairs, Mark Short is Trump, the Trump administration's point person to shepherd tax reform legislation through the Congress. We welcome Mr. Short now from the White House. Welcome back to the program, Mark. Good to have you here. So we've said four days you're going to try to get this through. You're responsible for it. Is that realistic? And perhaps more important, are you rushing it too much? Will, you, will Congress have the opportunity to really review things like what we're learning about from these Paradise Papers? Nothing illegal, but what's being done with tax havens. Will that be taken into account? Well, David, thank you for having me on again. Uh, this week, keep in mind, the four days is really what we'll be doing as far as a markup through the House Ways and Means Committee. Next week will be when we actually bring it to the House floor, and I imagine that'll go throughout the week, probably toward the end of next week. It'll be after Thanksgiving, really, before it comes to the Senate floor, in which the Senate will be introducing its own bill, likely, hopefully, getting that passed um, sometime early December. Then there'll be a conference report and then hopefully a, a bill to the president's desk before the end of the year. So it's not really four days. You're right that it, it is in the markup in the committee in the next four days, but this process is going to play out over the next several weeks. And Democrats will be afforded every opportunity to offer amendments they want in committee and as well as in the Senate floor. So there's going to be plenty of debate here. And I imagine hopefully the bill will continue to improve and we hope actually in a bipartisan manner. But, but Mark, the reports are that the chairman, Mr. Brady, has said that he doesn't want amendments on the floor. So that any amendments are going to get made are going to get made in these four days. Is that wrong? David, no, I think there'll be plenty of amendments offered in the committee. What I mentioned is that there'll be plenty of amendments offered on the Senate floor. The Senate will have an open amendment process, and Democrats and Republicans alike will offer amendments there. That is pretty par for the course as we operate in different structures and rules between the House and the Senate. So the House uh, process will be more amendments here in the committee. Senate will be both in committee and on the Senate floor. And then again, a conference report in which conferees will be named to reconcile the two bills. So there'll be plenty of debate moving forward and, uh, and a very open process. So, Mark, how confident are you you can get this done in the time period you set out? And perhaps more difficult to answer, what do you think the largest risk is? If you don't get it done, why will that be? Well, David, I think we're confident we'll get it done. But, uh, but what's important is that really that the economy has begun to turn a corner. We've seen unemployment reach 4.1 percent, the lowest number in 17 years. I think many of the regulatory impact, rolling back the Obama regulatory uh, burden from the last few years has really begun to turn the economy. We now need tax reform so the middle income families can really grow as well. And that's what we're focused on. It's not so much the timetable we need. It's what Americans need to get the tax relief they need to get the economy going again. Everyone, Mark, seems to be in favor of tax reform. Nobody I can find is against that. At the same right. time, there are some people who really have reservations about deficit spending right now, in part because of what you just said, with the unemployment rate so low. Is that a possible barrier to getting this through the Congress, the, the question of how many, much deficit we're going to take on? Well, David, keep in mind that the president put forward a 10-year balanced budget. Uh, we're hopeful that Congress will work with us in fighting our deficits. But there's no way, there is no way that we can pay for the commitments we have, particularly on a national defense perspective, unless we start growing this economy. The commitments we have to keep this world safe are enormous. To keep America safe is enormous. And there's no way that we'll be able to do it unless we get the economy growing faster than the 1.8 percent it averaged during the Obama years. So we need 3, 4 percent growth to really provide us the revenue to do what's needed to make sure Americans are safe. And as you look to get this through the House, that actually worked with Obamacare reform, but then it stumbled in the Senate side. Yeah. How conscious do you need to be about what you're hearing from things like Mr. Senator Lankford, who over the weekend was saying, you know what, we don't need any more deficits? Well, the, the margin that we have in the Senate is very narrow, which is why you've seen the president travel to North Dakota. You've seen him travel to West Virginia. You've seen him travel to Missouri and states that we hope we can earn bipartisan support. We saw, as you mentioned, just how narrow that majority is during the health care debate when we fell short by one vote that was unexpected at the last minute. But as we head into tax reform, right now Republicans are united, and we think we'll be able to keep the party united in delivering that tax relief to middle-income families and reducing the corporate rates so we can bring jobs back into our country. But again, I think that path will be easier if we're able to actually make this uh, bipartisan. We hope that we can, we can earn the support of some Democrat senators who, as you say yourself, have told us again and again that they want tax relief targeted middle-income families and corporate relief, which is what we're doing. 